welcome to the history hunter and my small adventures with the world war ii time frame just passing through this area i have about three three and a half hours available i always wanted to see if i can find this small spot on the atlantic wall fortification line and i will definitely do my best to share some details and moments with you here today so let's hope for the best and start the hunt doing this is just about knowing where you are and right now i'm absolutely lost hoping that I will head in the right direction but uh, first I would like to thank you all for viewing I'd like to say my huge thank you to all of you who are supporting me by either Patreon or PayPal really really appreciate that and it makes me able to do even more interesting material like doing this blind hunt here for a uh, small structure that I hold hope to be able to share with you but right now um, I'm not sure where I am so let's see if I can find this place just the other day there would be ice on that small pond of water there today it's not that cold so good for us the German fortification line running from the south of the tip of France to the top of uh, Scandinavia is a quite interesting uh, um, thing to, to research and uh, look into because it's got so many different kinds of uh, structures like bunkers and underground tunnels they have complex huge facilities and also you know small structures standing all by itself on the coastline where the Germans tried to uh, prevent the Allied from uh, invading. Every structure that the Germans put up here had a purpose. Could be huge cannon positions where they had uh, railroad cannons blowing off uh, um, artillery shells like 40-50 kilometers out into the sea and could be just small local um, uh, machine gun bunkers preventing some um, people coming land. Look at this, some equipment here. That is, uh, what is that? that look, is that a, that looks like a boat engine. Why is that right here? Could that be for running a um, power supply generator? I'm not sure, but it's right here, lying, laying there. Very strange. Let me show you a cool detail here around the area where the fortifications was look at that that's a more modern type of uh, barbed wire fence but if you look closer that is the German barbed wire that was put up here in at least one or two perimeters around the structures and it's up here in the air and you can find it every day if you like to So I've been up there, I've been down there, I've been over here, and now finally I found it. It's lurking there between the rocks and the trees, can you see it? Wow, very excited. This is a very remotely placed uh, octagon machine gun bunker that the Germans put here to defend the uh, coastline. So let's head on down there and check it out. I'm always very excited to see where exactly they put these structures because they were very clever in positioning them. You can see now we're about the structure, the octagon machine gun bunker is just around there. But you can see here they chose to put it so that they had this trench kind of line coming up towards the bunkers because they would come from this side here and they would come up here and into there is the bunker itself so they used this as a natural um, kind of trench to be able to support themselves towards the coastline and could hide behind here so wow look at that we found it i really love it 
this is a beautiful structure here in the nature actually and I have to say looks pretty impressive you can see the uh, slots there where they had the uh, openings for the machine gun there 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 you can see the tilted roof so it will deflect the grenades and bombs coming in and on the top you can see some hooks where the uh, camouflage canvas was uh, pulled over and we can see that the sun is actually rising up there wow that is so nice let's go up and uh, have a closer look at it It's a bit tricky now when the light is changing from very very dark to actually quite light bright look at that I have to say this is very nice to see her untouched nothing no graffiti just as it was and if you look closely here you can see they had some um, bars coming out there that is made to um, hang over local small pieces of canvas covering the area of the opening here I've seen that many times on these locations and then on the top see if I can do this without falling <laughs> on the top here these spikes coming out like that that is to attach the camouflage canvas going a bit further out from the bunker they would reach right to down here about here and then go up to the roof like here See the uh, narrow, narrow, narrow piece here would be because they wanted to have a small window where they can shoot from, but the angles inside would give them lots of room to work on. So the machine gun would be attached there on a special mount, and uh, they could really be a powerful way of uh, preventing the enemy to coming into the area. They might look just very, very humble here place there in the nature but they proved themselves to be a very effective way of preventing invasions like in Normandy and all the beaches on the D-Day thousands of allied soldiers lost their life only because some of these machine gun bunkers here you can see just on the other side here you have the natural uh, kind of uh, fortress area just behind the wall here that the sea and the nature has built itself you can see the bunker up there and the, you have this natural uh, embankment here and you have a natural embankment on the far side so it's it's pretty pretty uh, obvious that the Germans really knew where to put these things Let's see if I can illustrate that a little bit better look at this this wall here it's been there all the way since the beginning and uh, when you come up here it's quite obvious to see what the Germans took advantage of see here that wall over here and they said let's put the bunker up there and then we have this trench coastal line preventing lots of cover for the troops around the bunker they could actually stack up a lot of munition here and be safe from the attack from the outside there at the sea quite amazing let's go up there and check out that uh, uh, octagon inside so I moved a little bit further up look at that there it is this is the entrances two entrances and um, they actually made a uh, concrete surface area here behind it you don't see that too often I can see that I put up this small kind of embankment here maybe to make it easier to get in and out of the bunker and it's actually pretty pretty nice there's no graffiti and that is so great to see 
This is salt coming out from the uh, concrete itself. Just dissolves and being penetrated to the outside. Very often you would find a layer of uh, bitumen on the top to prevent the water from coming in, but you can see that it has separated and uh, the roof is actually cracking off there. But you can see the uh, camouflage canvas hooks there on the top. Let's see if we can go inside here. See if I can get you some images without over or under exposing it. Look at that. Here are the three main features of this bunker. This is where you can position your troops. Look at those stalactites coming down there. Look at that. That is wild. Look at that. That is salt directly out of the concrete. Wow. <laughs> But as I said, this is where you put up your men with the machine guns and they would have their duty standing here. Uh, I can't see the uh, mounting uh, rod for the machine gun, maybe they didn't put it up, maybe it was removed after the war. But it would be basically like here. It could also be that just stood here with a hand pod for the machine gun shooting out. But you can see they could angle it like very much like this and this so they will get very good range outside the uh, hole there and this is what they actually wanted to defend the coastline that you can see all the way down there this is the outer or left hand door and there is the right hand door um, just saw something here a piece of metal Probably just some scrap from newer time frame. You can see here, look at this perfect uh, embankment here. It's a perfect built trench. It's totally natural. It hasn't been built. That's just the way it is. Amazing. They were so clever in finding the right location for these things here. You can see here on this side, this is what they built to kind of extend the natural cover the wall of the rock would do and uh, they stacked it up it was a formidable area to be behind if the enemy fire would come from this side you would actually be quite safe behind here you can see they also completed the stacking of rocks right here to fill up the level to get the same height as they had up here on the uh, uh, concrete paved the uh, area in front of the bunker. I guess you haven't done this too often. I'm actually now on the top of the roof of the machine gun bunker. <laughs> That's pretty special. Sometimes it's very difficult to get up, but here we're just climbing on the rock, and there I am. You can easily see the camouflage canvas hooks, the angled roof, and Inside there, actually quite, quite coarse sand. I can see bricks actually, but it's heavily reinforced. You can see there was a top layer and that's separated. Kind of neat to see. Actually made a raw casting, filled in all kinds of rocks and concrete stuff and the um, rebars would be inside and it looks like they had a last top layer to just contour it on the top. From up here, you can see the structure's uh, features. The openings, left and right, is the roof. You got the shooting outlets on the other side. I'm just hoping that this can uh, be left alone. It's a nice reminder of what happened and uh, really happy to be able to share these moments with you so you can see these things for yourself. Not everyone lives around uh, structures like this, so uh, happy to be able to present these small little step backs in time to the World War II time frame.
Uh, I've been all over the place trying to find some more features, but there's no more. But I was very happy that I could share these small moments with you here today. And I'll definitely be back. I really appreciate all the support, all of you commenting, subscribing, subscriptions. And of course, a huge thank you to all of you PayPal and the Patreon's supporters. Really appreciate that. It gets me, gets me to do a little bit more and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy what I present to you. All right, I have to go. So I'll see you later and have a nice day.